my mom told me you have to play guitar when I was 17. I started taking lessons. And because I was already a poet, I was easy to put words and music together. Originally, I was born in the United States, but uh, my mother's from Brazil, my father's Palestinian. I was brought up in a nominal Muslim home because uh, my family agreed that we would be brought up Muslim. My other uncles also married Brazilian women. Their wives uh, would have pictures of Jesus and I just remember looking at those pictures and I always had questions about it. You know, who is Jesus? But then when I was uh, nine years old, my parents divorced. And uh, when my mom left, my father was overwhelmed. He didn't know what to do. And so he took me and my sister to his village in the Middle East. And we would go to some of the holy sites. And I saw these pictures of Jesus being crucified. And, I, and then I, I started wondering, how come I never see pictures of Jesus when he's old? One day I asked, I asked my dad, I said, you know, well, what do you say about Jesus? In our village, because our village is Muslim, we called him Isa. And he says, Isa is a great prophet, but there's another prophet who is more important for us, and he's Muhammad. Because I was so spiritually hungry, you know, I devoured Islam. I believed in it. I was fully convinced about it. After three years in the Middle East, I came back and I wanted to come back to America to preach to Christians so that Christians would become Muslims because I believed that Islam is the last religion, uh, the last prophet, and the last book. One thing that I used to do is that whenever I would walk by a church, I would spit at it. Whenever I see a telephone pole, I would look away because it's the shape of a cross. And uh, one day, uh, I, was, I was in high school. There was this kid named Brad, and he, we cut class together, and we went to the library. And uh, I went with him because I wanted to borrow an album by the Eagles called One of These Nights. Uh, this was in the 70s. <laughs> he said, you know, I want to ask you about what you think of Jesus. What do you think of like the Bible and stuff? I said, well, I don't believe in the Bible. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Muslim. And I rejected the message that he was trying to give me. But it was within a few weeks of that. Uh, it was the Easter of 1978. And, and this was in the days when they only had four channels. And so uh, the only thing that was on was an Oral Roberts crusade. And he was just talking and then suddenly it was like, Poof! the Holy Ghost fell on me. It was just like, whoa. And Jesus was right there. I had been a devout Muslim. As soon as I saw him, it was like seeing an old friend I, I, like, that I knew before. And I knew it was Jesus, and I knew something else. I knew that He's the Son of God. One of the biggest things I remember is the emptiness I felt before Jesus came. I remember as a Muslim, I would try so many times to come before Allah, and I would put the Quran in front of me and sit down and say, Allah, do something in my life. Allah, let me feel you. Allah, let me know that you that you care about me. Let me know that you're there. And nothing ever happened. And now I've heard about it so many times that people say there's a God-shaped hole in every man's heart. What blesses me is what Jesus said to the Samaritan woman. He said to her, I have water. If you drink of it, you will never thirst again. And when Jesus came, he gave me that water. And man, it changed me. It was so powerful. And when I came home at night, my dad said to me, uh, he says, Hsin, you know, it's my Arabic name, Hsin, sit down. And I sat down and then he said, uh, we're family, aren't we? And I said, of course. He says, we're Arabs, aren't we? And I said, of course. <laughs> and he says, we're Muslims, aren't we? And I didn't know that much about the Bible, but I knew that Jesus said, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before the Father. And I said, I said, uh, no, Dad, I'm not a Muslim anymore. You know, he took a shoe, threw it at me, <laughs> and then he, he asked me to leave the house. And I became very rebellious, and eventually my dad kicked me out. And when he kicked me out, 
I went to live with my mother in uh, Reno, Nevada. And when I went to live with my mom, my mom is Catholic, and she allowed me to go to church. And so I started going to church, and uh, I just started growing in the Lord. And I mean, it was just such a, a, a powerful time, and the miracles, and the joy, and the peace, and my life was so radical. It was so full of the, the love of God. It was shortly after that, you know, that I felt the burden to go to the ministry. I wanted to go to my people, the, the Muslims, specifically the Arab Palestinian Muslims, to tell them about the Lord. I believe that our job is to plant the seed. We're not supposed to convert people. We're not supposed to convince people. We're supposed to plant the seed. Jesus said, that, you know, that the sower goes out to sow. And so I want to just plant the seed. And I, and I know they're going to reject it initially. But if the seed is there, the Holy Spirit can come at night like he did with me and then, you know, do a miracle. And, and that does happen. When I was in the Holy Land, I did many ministries. I was involved with the church there. I was involved with street evangelism. I was shot at, you know, my, my car was shot once because I was mistaken for an Israeli settler. I was, you know, threatened. You know, one time I had a, a guy call me and said, he asked me, where are you? And uh, I was in Gaza City at that time, not at my home. My home was in the south of the Gaza Strip. Don't come to your home tonight because they're going to come kidnap you tonight. <laughs> But another ministry that I did that I, I, is that I used to sing with the kids, and I did many songs with the kids that I, I wrote specifically for the kids of Gaza. Why did I become a Muslim for six years? Why did that have to happen to my life? I believe God allowed it so that I would be able to go to them now with understanding. I found the truth. I, I, I'd almost would change it <laughs> to the truth found me, <laughs> you know, because he came to me. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The truth is a person. When you know Jesus, you know the truth. <laughs>